Hi, good. How are you today? Hi, you don't want the answer to that question. <laughs> oh, no. Well, my name is Meg York. I'm here with the Protection of Animal Society. Protection of Animal Society. Yes. Okay. And I'm here today to ask you to move Senate Bill 100 to the floor for Senate a vote. Senate Bill 100. Yes. Why are we talking about that? <laughs> well, this is uh, Senator Jones's uh, priority bill. And so it is. Um, is this so in my committee? Uh, but we're asking you to move it to the House floor for a vote. Yes, so we're in the. Is this in my committee? Yeah, I put it on your desk. <laughs> yeah, it, it did why why is this the first time I'm hearing about this? <laughs> Lord. Just can't get good help these days. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> That's okay. Well, seeing as it's the first time you're hearing about it, let me tell you really quickly what it is and what it does. So yeah, you're going to have to start from scratch because this is the first sure. time hearing of this. Oh, uh, that's, my apologies. It is okay. Um, because, because, because this bill is really long, it's really long, but it looks, um, or it looks really long, but it's really very simple. So what this bill does is it requires emergency operations plans to consider provisions for household pets, service animals, and livestock in the events of a natural disaster or an emergency. So. Makes sense. Yeah. Who's paying for it? <laughs> So um, we it just passed through the Senate through the Ways and Means Committee, and the Ways and Means Committee decided that there was um, really minimal expenditure. So what we're but somebody's got to pay for it. <laughs> well, nothing's free. You're right, nothing's free. But what it what we do have is we already have people, um, the Office of Emergency Management, creating plans for people in disasters. So what this does the state is state Office just, of Emergency Management. So we have the State Office of Emergency gotcha. Management, and they're working with local and community um, government to create emergency operations plans. Okay. So we're just adding animals in. So it's very, it's not actually costing us money, that much money because we're just adding them in. Not only so, but for, we can seek reimbursement in the event of a natural disaster through the Well, that's what I was Act. asking. Should something happen, who's then going to pay for that? But you said this. So you mentioned the federal, didn't this, wasn't there already a federal law on this I remember hearing something about? Like, why do we need another one? Sure, that's a very good question. So the federal- I know, I just asked it. <laughs> yes, so the Federal Pets Act was enacted in 2006 to amend the Stafford Act. And what that does is uh, states that do have these plans in place. When, they, when a disaster strikes and they do take care of their animals, they can seek federal reimbursement through that act. But Great. what we need to do is we need to have a plan in place so that we can organize our efforts. The Federal Pets Act requires good thoughts. It doesn't require good deeds. Right here, uh, we have some t cities and towns in our state that are reluctant to make plans for animals. Well, that's a big issue, cities and towns, because uh, where's the RMA on this? Because their presence in my district. I got to see him at the bar, and I don't want him biting my ear off about this crap. <laughs> Understandable. Well, we uh, we haven't gotten their support yet, but we're really optimistic about it, and we can definitely reach out to them and and get them to and hopefully get them to send in some letters of support. So, what all animals does this cover then? This, this bill covers household pets, so common companion animals, service animals, and livestock. It does cover livestock. Yes, which That's I thought would be of particular interest to you and your Absolutely, rural because they, you know, I mean, you know, I'm a Democrat. I'm sure you got a bunch of puppy huggers in my district, <laughs> and they're not, who the else are they going to vote for? But the livestock guys, I do need to keep happy. So how would it, how would it affect them? So, uh, well, we wanted to take farmers into consideration because this is really, we have two components to this bill. We of course have the animal component because we're, we're looking out for the interests of the animals, but we also have the public health, public safety aspect as well. So in including provisions for livestock, we've protected our economy that's rich in agriculture. We're also protecting those family farmers who use, um, who use animals to make, their, to make their income, to feed their families, to make their ends meet. So, um, and not only so, but in, in making plans for evacuation and temporary sheltering of livestock, we don't, we're not gonna run into the problems of um, animals left in, in, in places that could potentially then pollute the water. And I know that that's a very important issue to your wife. Clarice, the <laughs> conscience of the underdog family, indeed. Uh, well, so I'm still a little, iffy on the, if, if this is so good for the cities and townships, why, why is the RMA against it? I just, so, well, let's start there. Who, who all is, I mean, who could be against this otherwise, other than the money people? I mean, who, which, who's lined up on either side? I need to make a pile here of who's for, who against, and 
we'll see which pile's bigger. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, as you know, uh, this bill did pass the Senate. Uh, we've had over 80 co-sponsors. Um, we have bipartisan support. We have Senator Jones as the chief sponsor. We also have uh, represent, or Senator O'Connor in her uh, coastal district. She's signed on as well. The American Red Cross supports it. And this bill, uh, similar bills have been uncontroversial and passed in over 30 other states. So we really don't expect opposition. We have received some letters from Smith and uh, Brittany Sarnes. Brittany and Clarice are indeed friends. That will make my, make my life a little easier. Now, what about, let's still, what? I need to get something for, hmm, what about, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's your name again? My name's what, Meg. Uh, what's the name of your group? Oh, Protection of Animal Society. Man, I've gotten some just incendiary emails from you guys about another one of my bills. 200, is that, is that right? 200, yes, mm -hmm. oh yes. We had some. We had a slaughterhouse burned down in our district, and so there's no. They're trucking that. us all over the place, and we're trying to get this mobile slaughter just to kind of. What's your take on that? So I, I, that was tragic for those farmers who are left with such, so few resources, and um, and I am and no so, way to kill all their cows. <laughs> I know, and I am so sorry that we've had people that have been bombarding you with emails. We're really actually trying to rein that in and just that would help. let you speak with the people you want. It's to not speak like I'm with. reading them, but poor Kara has to wade through all that stuff, and it <laughs> brings her to tears. Oh, I'm so sorry. So um, as far as that bill goes, we have no plans to oppose it. We're neutral on that bill. Um, and I know, <laughs> but we are willing to. Can we shift that from neutral into drive? <laughs> well, we. What I can tell you is that we're we're not. We can't. We're not going to take a stand on the issue. But we're also going to let Senator Jones know that we're not taking a stand. And if you two want to talk about, uh, want to ha hash this out or ask any questions about the, each other's bills, I can definitely facilitate. If you can talk to too. Jones. Just to let you know, we do have uh, your next meeting in three minutes. Three so. minutes. Welcome to my nightmare. <laughs> uh, if you can talk to Jones, and if you can get a commitment from him, that might make my life a lot easier, and then I think we might be able to, that would, that would grease the skids a little bit on my end. Um, so what, I'm still coming down to this money thing. So where's this other 25% going to come from? You said 75% comes from the feds. Where's this other 25% coming from again? So like, so like I said, um, it doesn't require much more to include animals in provisions that are already written. We also have... Well, it's easy to write the, the word in there, but when it actually happens and someone has to sure. truck all these puppies somewhere, who's paying for that? Sure. So what we have is uh, Protection of Animal Society also works with the Disaster Animal Response Team. And we have, as you know, we have 5,000 members in your district alone, um, several of which are, are farmers, and we have, um, they're, we're an all-volunteer organization. And so what we want to do as an organization is do some community outreach, do some education, these types of problems start and end locally. And we want to work at the most local level, which is really the owner of the animal. So we're going to offer some free educational campaigns to teach people how to take care of their own animals, how to provide for their own animals. And then when disaster strikes, we've, we've mitigated that responsibility. And what does uh, fall outside of the owner will fall pound on the volunteers. Pounds of prevention saves a pound of cure. Absolutely. And lots of dollars. <laughs> Absolutely. I like that. All right. So again, who is there anyone else opposing this then? We haven't gotten any vocal opposition. It's, it, I, this is going to be an easy bill. This is an easy one to say yes and to. And who is there? Is there any other than the puppy huggers? Anyone else uh, supporting this other than these animal groups? Well, predominantly. They're going to vote for me anyway. I'm sorry. <laughs> Just being honest here, I don't need you know. I don't need to please them. I'm a Democrat. <laughs> Absolutely. So of course we do have the supports of the animal groups, as you said. We also have the support of the American Red Cross. That looks nice. Right. And then, uh, like I said, some farmers that are part of our group that are also working with other farmers. They're getting them on board. What do the vets think about this? The vets are all for it because here's the thing. Um, what another provision of this bill is that it honors out-of-state veterinary licenses and and uh, makes it so they're they're limited in their liability when they do provide good faith efforts to help animals kind of like good disasters. Samaritan vibe yes absolutely so this bill is good for everyone it's good for the animals it's good for the farmers it's good for the people 
It's good for us. It's good for the vets. This is an easy bill to You say yes make to. a very powerful case, young lady. So you talk <laughs> to Jones. You, you try to get him on board with that 200, and maybe we can do a little swap a here. Absolutely. All right. I'm going to go ahead and leave you with my card. Let Appreciate me know if you it. have any questions, and we'd love, again, for you to move this bill to the floor for a vote. Thank Good to you. meet you, Ms. York. Meet Hope you your day well. is better than mine. Oh, thank you. Hug them puppies.